guy will forget more than I'll ever learn about public works and about this great city. And I'm working, trying to study under his wonderful tutelage there as my colleague. Okay, now we've called a special meeting together. Uh, what's the item there, um, Mr. Adam? Special item today is motion, Cardinus Wiesar, relative to asserting jurisdiction over the January 7, 2008 action by the Board of Public Works, approving the detailed list of awarded projects for cycle 11 of the community beautification grant pursuant to charter section 245 and related matters. There is a time limit on this of February 5, 2008 for council action, with the last day for council action on February 5, 2008. Hey, uh, we have our esteemed colleague here. Would you please come on up, Mr. Cardinus, and tell us about your motion and where we are. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Chairman, Councilmember Smith, for you coming together just to hear this one item. It is rare that we do have meetings just on one item, but also I think you're doing it out of respect to the department and the process that is underway. Uh, that, and uh, you heard me, Chairman, loud and clear. My intent here was not to delay or cause heartburn, un undue heartburn on any organization or the department itself when they're putting out these grants. I'd like to start off by saying I think it's great that the City of Los Angeles has such a process where we can take public funds, partner with the communities throughout the city, and work with them to uh, help them with the financial responsibilities of beautifying their community. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, uh, one of the reasons why I put the motion forward is my chief of staff um, did meet with um, a person from the uh, uh, Office of Community Beautification and uh, did talk with them uh, over a year ago uh, around this time and then spoke with them again. And what caused me to want to put a motion in is to let the department know that when they answer questions, we don't expect them to give us an answer right there and then if they don't have the right answer, go back and get it and then give us a good answer, the right answer, so we can all be on the same page. Some of the questions that were asked a year ago were inconsistent with some of the answers given to similar questions this year. Um, I want to make sure that people are, understand I am not here to try to get people to think that I want more money to come to my district. That would be petty and that's not why I'm here. I believe that this is a great program. I think this is a program that should succeed and continue and hopefully grow. Yet at the same time, it should serve all of Los Angeles. Yet, what I do want to make sure that the department understands is they should be reviewing always. They should always be reviewing the process that they've been engaging in. When people don't, when people apply and they don't get accepted, there should be a process in which they educate them as to how they could do better next time. Are they, do they have an adequate process on that or not? I don't know. What I would hope from you, Mr. Chairman, is that you get some report backs and there's only a small list that I have, you may have more, some report backs from the department about how they're doing on those fronts, including that point. They, it's wonderful to go ahead and congratulate those organizations that have written grants well enough to get funded and pro projects that are good enough to get funded and do good works in the communities. At the same time, what happens if someone actually applied five years ago, three years in a row, and didn't get it? What do you think they're gonna do? Sooner or later, they're gonna say, hey, this is not my cup of tea. I'm not going to apply for these anymore. That, maybe it doesn't mean that they don't have good projects. It just means that maybe they're not communicating well. Maybe they don't have those communication skills. Another thing that is a real big issue in my community, uh, especially where I grew up in Pacoima, is the fact of the matter is you have a lot of not-for-profits that do wonderful things in the community. It's just that the executive, for example, because of lack of funds, is wearing 10 hats. They're the executive, they're the actual manager, they're the ones that go, go out there and actually dig the holes sometimes, they're the ones that actually have to write the grants, et cetera. They don't have the ability to compete sometimes with other organizations that might be fortunate enough to be more uh, uh, competitive. And also organizations, there are not-for-profits that actually have grant writers, either in-house or they have grant writers or the ability to have grant writers who actually do it pro bono just because of the circles in which they run in. So to me, I just wanted to make sure that we have a fair process 
And I'm not casting any aspersions on, on the, the program itself, but what I do want to make sure that uh, is unfortunate, well, it's unfortunate that my chief of staff couldn't be here because he would give you some specifics because he is the one who communicated with that person last year, this year, et cetera, and he was a little hot under the collar because he was a little bothered that there was some inconsistencies. And uh, immediately uh, the answer came back to him when the selection process was over, hey, but you got like six projects or something. That's not the point. It's not the point at all. As a matter of fact, I'm here not so much to focus on the projects that got funded. I'm here to try to get everybody to remember how do we make sure that it's as inclusive as possible? How do we make sure that the people who are applying come back to the table when they maybe have given up? What are we doing to communicate with them? Can we ever have a perfect pro process? No. Will some people get uh, discouraged and never want to come back to the table no matter what we offer them? Hey, that's, that's fine. That's up to them. But at the same time, what are we doing to review the process? For example, I think there's a great report back question, and that is, <clears throat> what was the original goal and intent in writing when we started this process? When was it started? Whose idea was it? What did they come up with? How did they, how did they do that? Was it a dynamic growing process, or is this something where it was actually dynamic and growing for the first few years, and all of a sudden, it's just kind of etched in stone, and everybody's just going through the motions and uh, funding, again, good projects, but funding them without looking at the dynamics of what we could do better, okay? That's one thing I'd like uh, uh, the chairman to ask for a report back on. Some in addition to that, I mean, um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> And secondly, also educate us, the council, on how the, this program has grown dynamically. What is it about the program that started a certain way and it's different now? And in addition to that, let's use this year's funded projects as an example of which ones actually met the dynamics of the kinds of projects they wanted to fund concurrent with the purpose of the program. You get what I'm saying? Because there's a big difference between there being a great project, but at the same time, what does it have to do with that program? For example, one of the projects that was funded, it looked like the actual application uh, was actually written for Prop O. And it was a very small funding. And the thing that, that jumped out at me was, if this is exactly right under what Prop O is for, these are much more limited funds than Prop O. Why doesn't that project either piggyback with another Prop O project or just get funded straight out of Prop O. Because I tell you, it was perfect for Prop O. Again, great project. With these limited funds in the, you know, tens and tens of thousands where Prop O is at $500,000 and has a specific purpose, and when you take something that is specifically fits right into their purpose, why didn't they get funded there? Maybe there's a great answer. And maybe that answer is, well, they did apply to Prop O and it didn't make it, so they came over here. That being the case, again, is that consistent with the purpose of the program? Should they have told them, you know what, is there an urgency here? If there's not an urgency, go back to Prop O. We'll even write a letter of support saying we love it ourselves, right? Things of that nature. So, um, again, I, I apologize that I don't have more specific examples or questions, but my chief of staff was running point on this, and uh, as we spoke earlier, Mr. Chair, um, He's out of town for personal family reasons, and we pray for, for him and his family that everything's okay. So far, so good. But the bottom line is he couldn't be here today, and that is the, the main uh, issue at hand. And um, to close, I would like to say that um, my office did get calls and emails. It's wonderful to see the community so engaged. Um, most, most of those calls and emails were people upset. Why are you delaying the process or what have you? With all due respect, this is not a delay of the process. The fact that we 245 an item that was voted on by a commission is in fact our authority and responsibility. So also the department needs to look into the timing of how they roll things out to make sure that they don't make it look like there's some kind of intervention of a process if in fact the legislative body of the city of Los Angeles actually is exercising their responsibility to take a look at it as well before it is finalized and before money goes out. Totally agree. Um, why don't you stay with us, Tony, while sure, we I bring will. up the department on it. And, and as for us moving quickly, that's why when you put the 245 and we scheduled a special meeting for mm -hmm. today, first day back after Martin Luther King weekend, so there would be no delay in anything. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you that maybe we should get a lot more notice, time framing on that. Um, if I could ask 
you to answer his questions that, that he threw out, especially the criteria used, the new day, how we notify people, what do we do, and also um, how many projects have we approved and, and how is the breakdown in the council districts? Sure. Um, Cynthia Reese, President of the Board of Public Works, and I have Paul Roch, the Director of the Office of Community Beautification. And actually, this is a program that Public Works is very proud of. We've had the program for the last 10 years. It was originally started by Commissioner Valerie Shaw. And the purpose was that we wanted to partner with the community. And we give very small grants, or up to $10,000, and we require the community group, whoever that might be, to match the dollars with volunteer hours. So it's an investment. Uh, basically, we're funding small grants where the community does all the work. And so it's, it's a great partnership. And, and, and um, we last year just celebrated our 800th completed project. So it's a very, very popular um, program that we have. We, with very little money, money, we're able to really stretch our dollars and partner with the community. Now, it, what's happening with this program is getting very, very popular. And this past funding cycle, we had 215 requests, and we were only able to fund 88 programs. Now, I wish I had enough budget to fund all of them because there's really a lot of great requests. And it's not something that requires a professional grant writer. We purposely don't do that. We want it to be very community-based so it really comes from the, the community. So we're at the point now where we have a lot more applications than we actually have money. And I'm going to turn it over to Paul, and he's going to explain exactly step by step the process because the process hasn't changed in the last 10 years because um, it's very grassroots oriented and, and we haven't really had any complaints. Now, maybe one area that we can improve, if somebody doesn't get uh, the grant, maybe work with them a little bit more. But uh, we have a very small staff in the Office of Community Beautification. We only have 13 allocated slots, three vacancies. So we have 10 people working on not only this, but graffiti removal and uh, all the community beautification projects. So it's a very small staff that works on this, and uh, we're here to, you know, obviously we work very closely with the council, and we're here to work with you any way we can to really showcase this. And I'm going to turn it over to Paul to talk about step by step the um, process, because it's a year long process. Uh, good afternoon. Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification. Um, as was mentioned, first off, we have two dedicated staff people that work on uh, the grant section. Um, so they do everything from the orientations to the workshops to putting together the applications. Um, the program, one of the, the main goals of the program is really that the applications are scored and reviewed by members of the community. Um, and each, each part of the city, West LA, South LA, Central, kind of broken by the, the planning regions, um, we have approximately 10 community members. Um, the service review panelists and each of those those volunteers uh, review about eight to ten projects. Each project is uh, reviewed by two different scores. Nobody knows who has the other project or anything like that. How does one become part of that panel? Uh, the, there's various ways. Um, we we utilize past recipients of the grants. Um, we utilize known community leaders, sometimes like a principal of an elementary school, members of neighborhood councils. We've also seek or sought output from the the different from council offices to submit um, people that they know would be a, a good fit for review panelist. Um, every year we get a few more that come on as a few more go off. Um, you know, people do it for a couple years in a row and then it kind of gets, you know, a little too time consuming or they just feel like they've, they've put in their time. Um, so people do kind of rotate around. Um, sometimes, you know, if we get a review panelist that we don't think was up to snuff for whatever reason, you know, we won't ask them back the next year. We'll try to bring in some fresh blood every year. Um, there is a series of 10 sort of review criteria um, which are, are in each of the applications. Um, so all the groups know up front exactly what it is that they are going to be scored on. Uh, we, we meet with all the uh, review panelists prior, give them the same materials, the same uh, review criteria so that they know um, exactly what it is that they're scoring. And, and Paul, how many community workshops do we have throughout the year to inform the community about this grant program? Yeah, we, be, we begin our outreach usually in July, um, August, 
September. So, so about a two and a half month period. Um, we'll typically do um, 15 to 20 outreach um, sort of workshops throughout the city, letting people know about the grant, letting people know um, what it is that we're looking for as as they fill out the applications. When you do the outreach, tell us more about the outreach. Who we, the outreach? We do out so neighborhood yeah. councils. What, what's the group? Schools. I, any group we can get. First off, we put information on all the workshops um, in all the public libraries throughout the city. We outreach to uh, elementary schools. We let each council office know and bring outreach materials to each of your field offices so that you can distribute them to groups that, that you know of. Uh, we work with uh, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment to bring that information to all of the neighborhood councils. And then we have obviously a mailing list of people that have expressed interest over the past several years in the grant project. Um, so we do a mailing, you know, of all those people that we are aware of as well. Um, real quickly, we do follow up with all of the grant projects that are not funded. Um, we do, they do get a letter um, letting them know um, who to contact if they have any questions on the uh, why their project wasn't funded, what they could do to make it a stronger um, project for the following year. Our application process is basically the same from year to year. But every year we do look at it um, and, and we do make small changes of different things that we think will benefit it, make it so easier, you make have it a more clear. criteria sheet that somebody can look at and see uh, how they can Absolutely, yes, we do. It's all in the, uh, in, in the guideline application here, we do. Um, we're certainly more than willing to sit down with, with any council office, and, we, and we've done it with several of them over the past several years. Um, to, to talk about the process, make the council offices more aware, because we really do depend on your field staff to get a lot of the information out to, to the groups that, that you know of um, and some of the projects that you think would be, uh, have a benefit of this type of program. Because when you say you meet with people or you let them know um, why they didn't get the grant, do you, you specify your, the financials were weak or what was wrong with the application? Yeah, sit we, down and counsel we, them? we will specifically go over with them uh, the review packets, um, you know, their scores and the comments that the uh, reviewers made. Um, if they say, asked for that. Yeah, uh, right, right, if, if they asked for it. Some of them, you know, just... just uh, and how many do? Uh, I don't know exactly who that. Michael, uh, do you, Mike Espinosa is the grant manager. How, how many people yeah, do you think? 250 this year. Wait, 15, 215. 215, so we added, funded 88. I mean, just so far. Just have a seat and introduce yourself. So you, you, you had almost 130 that didn't get it. Yeah. How many of them came in and said, can you tell us what we did wrong? Okay, my name is Michael Espinoza, and I'm the grant manager of the Office of Community Beautification. And yes, we, I would say we talked to at least 30% of all the people. And what I do is they talk to me personally because I don't want them talking to anybody else. And I want to make sure that I give them the skills and the reasons, very specific reasons, on how to make the grant more competitive for the following year. Because what ultimately I'd like to do is make our community as strong, strong grant writers. Because mm -hmm. once they could find the money within their communities, you know, our, our grant is a grant with training wheels, and we want them to go to Proposition O and all the other funding this sources. Is really, I've looked at the, the application. This is a relatively simple. Yeah, as, as simple as we can possibly make it and yet still have certain city criteria the important is that you do sit down with all those that want to sit down and t tell them, here's what you need to do to make this stronger. Because I've, I've had them rejected and they came back the next year and got them. Right. And we, we sat down and said, here's what's missing. And, and, so you, and the problem is, over time, as more and more people become familiar with the grant, unfortunately, there are more and more people that are not receiving the grants just because yeah. it's it's so much more competitive. I had one this year that was was turned down last year. It was probably the strongest I'd ever seen in my life. Mm. It was turned down last year because they just didn't write it right. And so we sat down and said, here's what you got to do, and they got the grant this year. So it shows that if you work with people, they can get over those hurdles usually. But the, the fact that 30 percent are doing that, it's a good indication that it's known that you can do that at least if they take advantage of it. And, and it does take a lot of my time because ultimately if they call, I have to put a lot of time into really thinking about what, what they need to do in the following years. And actually that phone call actually takes usually about a half an hour because it's hard to get them off the phone because yeah. <laughs> they're not in a good mood. Well, they pay your salary, so I'm sure they'd appreciate that. And then the other question is uh, in the, the pre-conferences that you do, the, the 
workshops. Workshops. Yeah. Um, how many participate out of the 215 that submitted? How many were actually in the conferences up front? I believe we had over 300 people that attended this the, year. The, uh, uh, usually, pretty people. much in every yeah every one that submits an application usually it attends a workshop. We have a mandatory um, orientation session for all the groups once they find out that they've been funded, um, which they need to go to just to make sure they're all on board of the exact steps that they need to do to begin their process. If they have any permit issues they might need to go through with the city, um, or if they're good to get started and how they go about drawing down the funds and that yeah. sort of stuff. And last question, you heard Councilmember Cardenas' concerns is there any ideas you have to make you make the system better to meet those concerns? Yeah, you know, again, we're we're always every year look at our, our um, application process. If there's anything that we can do to strengthen it, do things that might make it easier or or clear for the community groups, um, we're more than happy to sit down with with any council office and hear their concerns. Um, sometimes we, I know that we've set up special orientation sessions, you know, specifically for a council office where they might want to bring in um, groups that, that um, uh, might have various barriers or something like that in, in um, filling out an application. Uh, perhaps, you know, they need a, a Spanish language orientation yeah. or something like that. And we, we obviously and definitely have that capability to provide. And uh, Council Member, what we may add <coughs> is um, what we have not done in the past is a workshop on the people that did not receive it. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can add a workshop saying that yeah. this is ways where you can improve your chances next time because we really do want to fund these programs and work with the people. So we'd be more than happy to add something like, like a follow-up, yeah. all the people that got it, and then an extra workshop for how you can improve for next time. And do we make sure or ensure that some people don't get, competitive, uh, get repetitive grants? They're always the winners because they know how to write this stuff, and there's always those that lose because they don't know how to write it. Do we make sure that somebody doesn't get it year after year after year? Spread it around. Spread it around more? Yeah, the, the main thing we do is anybody that has an open grant um, cannot apply for another grant. But if somebody's received a grant previously, as long as that grant's been completed, mm -hmm. um, they are eligible to, for a new uh, project? to fund for a new project. A yes. new project, but not the same project. Uh, it, sometimes it could be a continuation of maybe like a phase two of something like that. Uh, maybe uh, for the first project, maybe they put uh, uh, landscape landscaping or something like that. And then the next year they want to come in and put in a community identification sign on the same median island or something like that. But it needs to be somewhat separate and stand alone as far as a project. Please, Tony. Uh, thank you. Um, Councilmember Smith, that, that's a great question. Um, and, and personally, I'm not in favor of, of rigid black and white, you know, things. For example, we have the California Foundation, which started off with about $4 billion, and uh, they have a standard norm that they haven't been able to break, that they only give grants three years tops, that's it. I don't care how good you are. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're saving the world or you know going to find a cure for cancer and you're one year away. Bottom line, say that's it. Three, three years. That's it. We don't. They don't do that. Um, I think that kind of rigidness uh, isn't good for anything. Uh, but at the same time, that those are the kinds of things I'd like to see if they could report back to the committee and say what mechanisms have they grown toward, either formal or informal. Are they custom and practice, or are they part of the your own internal binder? of what you, you know, how you're going to handle it, and is there a sit-out period? Uh, for example, when you do have uh, an organization that does great work, they do a lot of, say they're, they're in their name of their organization is beautification. So they're right up the alley, you know, they're doing, uh, like you said, welcome signs to communities, and they're doing, uh, you know, getting rid of graffiti or, or, or training children on, on how to clean up their neighborhood, all these wonderful things. Does it make sense or not? I'm not making a recommendation, but express to us the council, does it make sense or not for there to be or not to be a sit-out period for these wonderful organizations that are so darn good that they're, uh, say last year you funded 70, this year it's 88. They were one of 70. They're one of 88. And the year before they were one of 69 and then one of 60. They're always getting the grant. That means that they're filling a spot that maybe some other organization could grow to appreciate uh, being in that spot. But the bottom line is they're just 
again, not competitive enough because maybe there's six or ten of those organizations that are doing great work that have just mastered this. Again, great work, but they're, they're filling these limited spots. And if I might, Council Member, maybe what we should also do is notify you not only of the, the groups that are awarded in your district, but maybe also notify you of the ones that are not awarded so maybe you can work with them and see if there's other sources of funding that we can really do. Because the community really puts their heart and soul into these projects. And I really wish I had enough money to fund them all. So we should notify you of the ones that didn't get it so you could You guys, we, we do. I believe on the, the master sheet that you guys get, you get a list of your funded projects and then the projects that were not funded. But, but I think what the President was just talking about, which is a great idea, and that is maybe encouraging other entities like council offices, since we are sectored out and we are representing 15 different parts of the city, where maybe we could decide if we want to engage with you in like a round two, if you want to call it that, where, for example, uh, say in this case six, an average of six per district, uh, but the average district uh, seemed to, six were, were funded and the average district sound like about 14, 15 on average. So maybe uh, it could be afforded to a council office and or neighborhood councils, yeah. et cetera, for them to round one, round two, round three. It's really not your, your money on the second or third round, but there's some great, great applications, but you just didn't have enough money. So therefore, what happens is at the end of the process, maybe uh, using this year's figures, 215 applications, 88 funded directly in round, what I'm describing as round one, and all of a sudden you find that round two, maybe another 14 or 15 were funded, and then round three, another six or seven were funded. Then we have over 100 projects. Again, wonderful projects, organizations and communities that deserve to have this beautification, and then we enhance it even further. Uh, let me um, read some questions into the record. Um, and, and on this form, which is helpful, you should put another line of how much money it is mm -hmm. per council district. Okay. You know, because some grants are 10K, some are less or whatever, just to get a sense of, of the financial breakdown. Let me just read them for the record. Some of you have already answered. Um, when was this grant program established? Ten years ago. Um, what are the criteria for awarding the grants? That has to be clear, okay? Make sure that, that we get a simple sheet on it, not just a, a form <laughs> document like this. Something simple that anybody can look at that gets out to the neighborhood councils, gets out to all the community groups. This is the 10 criteria or eight or something. You know, yeah. This is a backup to fill out forms and stuff. Third, do you have a breakdown of the grant recipients by council district? The answer is yes, and we'll add another column, which is the, the dollar amount okay. per council district. Uh, four, does each council district receive the same amount of grants each cycle? Well, we just saw where two of the 15 got five grants and the rest all got six grants. So It was a very even year this it year. Seems not, pretty clear. Not, not every year is quite that even. Yeah. But and, and, and it certainly isn't pork politics by electeds when you see that it's pretty much the same right. across the board. Nobody did a strong arm and got eight or ten. <laughs> okay, and somebody else got three, two or three. Okay. Um, uh, how many grants are awarded in each cycle? You, that's the well, it varies thing. because um, last year we actually worked really hard and awarded 100 because it was Public Works 100 year anniversary. Right, 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 right. So at that, for that, to celebrate that we did 100, but this year we didn't have the funds to know. do it. Okay. Must an applicant <laughs> contain matching grant in order to be awarded these grants? It's, it's matched with uh, time or money, so it could be volunteer hours. I know. Um, what kind of outreach is done by the board to ensure that all council districts have grant applications? You've answered that. You're all over the place, right? As much as we can be, absolutely. Okay. And it's also online if yes, somebody punches into the system. Uh, does the board ever seek input or advice from council districts about what groups and applicants? Yes, we do. Okay. We, we and that particular but, but, but I personally don't get involved in actually the selection, nor do any of the commissioners. So we seek input in terms of people submitting applications, but we don't have any direct uh, influence over who gets them. All that's left up to the grassroots process. Fair enough. And I know, as Mr. Mr. Cardenas was saying about his chief of staff, who's here on um, his father's illness is dealing with his mother right now. Um, the particulars of a given grant person that didn't get it or shouldn't get it or whatever has to be totally clear, not only to the chief of staff, but to the council member. So that doesn't happen again in the context of one particular group or not group or something like that. And, and to be honest with you, I was not aware of any conversations that had taken place until the, the motion came out. 
So, but we're, you know, we're more than happy to work with all council offices. Very cool. Now, Mr. Cardenas, your report back, so are we clear on what they are, committee? No? no. Would you restate them at okay. this point? One of them, uh, Mr. Chair, is that uh, the report to the council about not only the dates of, of it was 10 years ago, what have you, how it's grown to where it is today. Were there any philosophical changes along the way from 10 years ago when it started? And how does that uh, fit into the grant process, for example, of the 2000, is it considered the 2007 process that just finished? Yeah. So they're awarded in 08, but the process is in 07. Okay, the, the process that just got awarded, the 88 uh, uh, projects that they can use that as an example of how that, that is the consistency with how it started, how it developed, and what, what they're trying to fund uh, philosophically, why the, pro why the program even exists. So re that being a report back. Uh, secondly, um, if, if they could go ahead and show the council a timeline that if for some reason or what have you, the official process hasn't completed, such as the council having the opportunity to look it over itself before it's done and awarded, that that be respected as well in the process. And um, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, okay, one of them I put like three of them all together, as in the goals, how it started, how it developed, and then how it's working today. So moved. So moved. Uh, we will do that. Oh, one more thing that I think they agreed to, but I guess you could make it a report back on, um, I guess, reporting on, on how and formalizing the uh, communication with the grants that didn't get funded. They did answer it verbally, yeah. but might as well put it in the report back as well. So moved. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Now, um, the motion itself which basically said bring it to the committee. Uh, all of these folks here who want to speak, um, just want to let you know that uh, after Mr. Smith and I vote, which will be after you speak, it'll go right back to the council for immediate action to be funded. And it could be as early as Friday? It could be as early as... I don't know. No, I don't think so. Uh, I was not instructed to obtain a placeholder, therefore I won't be able to put it on for Friday. We'll, we'll it's make... Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. So Tuesday. Tuesday. Next, yeah. next Tuesday. So we'll be pushed through the process next Tuesday, assuming we both agree on wanting to do that, which we'll have that conversation in a second. So I, I say to both, you know, to Robin and to Tracy and to Maxine and Nadine and Pauline, do you all want to still speak? No, no, that's fine. Is that fine? I'll spend for one second. All right, then, then um, we'll, we'll just let you come on up. Before thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank, thank you. you, Mr. Cardenas, because this was a learning experience for me. And thank you for doing that. I learned a lot more about the grants in my district and how they are decided and what the situation was. So it was a good public service thank to all of us. Okay. Thank you. Please, come on up. Hi, I'm Robin Mires. Um, I'll just mention that I was one of those people who applied for a grant last year and was denied the grant last year. But this year I called and I want to make sure you know that you have really excellent staff and this program is really well run and I spoke with Michael Espinoso and probably took up that full half hour <laughs> and he gave me very specific input which then enabled me to get funded this year. Excellent. Now great, that great. is excellent, it's really great, great, well great, great, run. Great, great. The other thing I want to tell you though is <laughs> it needs way more funds. No. And yeah. I went to a, a meeting regarding Quimby funds, and they're putting up lampposts for $100,000, one lamppost for $100,000. What this group would do with $100,000 is way beyond what one lamppost at, Stein, at Stoner Park will do. But that's a really cool lamppost. No. No. It, this is grossly underfunded. It's extremely well administered, and it shouldn't have delays like this because we work extraordinarily hard to put together these grant applications. They're actually bears. I do, I do public art professionally. I've been awarded hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants for in other cities. This was one of the hardest grants I've ever done, not because of, how, of, of what you have to write, because that's all pretty well described and brief. But the documentation is just uh, in, uh, amazingly difficult. And there are problems in my neighborhood of Venice like that everybody's applying for one of these. So when they say that you're supposed to get letters of support from community 
groups, nobody else will give a letter of support because they're all submitting their proposals. <laughs> we know. That was one of the major reasons I was declined That's last year. So, Robin, in our district, the 11th, we had 17 applications and we awarded six grants. And we probably needed all 17 to I'm be sure. funded because yeah. Venice is a mess. Yeah. But yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. And, and uh, not that I can talk politics here, but we have Measure S on the ballot uh, uh, on two weeks from today. Uh, which is a significant issue of our general overall budget. Uh, and uh, we're in a situation now where we're already in a deficit, uh, and Mr. Smith and I are both on the budget committee, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to the budget process this year to see how we're going to move forward in just basic <laughs> services for the city, as we also hear the state doing its thing. So these are tough times in budget situations. Totally agree with you. The community support and outreach and everything is fantastic. And I know personally some of these groups, how hard they've worked uh, to get that funding. And, and I agree with what you said. Does anybody else want to speak? Well, then come on up and introduce yourself, Nadine. I'm Maxine Laurel from Maxine. the Venice Canal Foundation. Uh, I would like to know what steps we should do from today. How do we approach a no vote for the motion? Right to each council person? We mean a no vote. Well, uh, for the motion. For the motion was to come before the committee today, which we've right. just done. Then we go before the council, and we're going to fund these projects and get beyond. Okay, so, so there's no... No, no concern. No concern. No. It'll be unanimous. It'll, It'll be, be unanimous. I next guarantee next it. Next <laughs> okay, guarantee. that's what By we the were council. concerned. Mm -hmm. I know you were concerned about well, it. Right. We apologize <laughs> that you came out at this level, but the issue was no. significant enough that we did it. But yeah. don't worry. It'll be over my dead body that you don't get. No, this 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 meeting was an eye opener. Yeah, for me too. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it's it's wonderful that we are able to come down in sit in. Pleasure to have you, Maxine. Anybody else? Please, your name, please. Uh, my name is Pauline Morrow, and um, Pauline Morrow, yes. Um, I just I listened to Councilman Cardenas' remarks about the motion, and I just want to let you know, um, you know, I, li I live in Eagle Rock. We were awarded ten thousand dollar grant. Even if we hadn't won the grant, I would think it was completely fla fair and clear. You know, they offered. Um, seminars, a PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if you got the PowerPoint presentation, but it basically <laughs> held your hand on how to like, you get this, you get points for this, you get points for that, you get points for this. And, there, and they, they set expectations. There's, there's like, we award one out of two. And I went back and I set expectations with my folks, my community. And I also want to say, we're a grassroots org. I'm a full-time mom. <laughs> I have two kids. Oh, great. I, you know, we, this is all volunteer work, you know? It's not like, I've never applied for a grant before except to Target, and they were like opaque. This is the most amazingly <laughs> transparent, you know, group, and Michael Espinosa gave um, direct lines, his direct phone line, and direct email, and you know, on the website, you can't get that PowerPoint presentation where I checked it, because I was like, oh my God, it was so clear. But you know, that, that's all I want to say, and, and, and there is a process, they outlined it, and it, it makes me a little discouraged to know that there's a process and that if you follow the process, it can cut, you can kind of get stalled because I think there's a better way to go about this. I think it's good to have good governance and this is important to make sure the process is clear. Right but maybe you should like let the cycle go through. Oh, we will. And, you know, do you we know will. what I mean? It, yeah. that's, that's, we will. That's, You're actually, the, the better way would have been let the thing go through and then bring a motion and say clarify these issues. Exactly, that's that's all yeah. that Correct. process. And we appreciate you saying that yeah. and, and we will be moving forward. And we ought to put the PowerPoint on the website. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Not All I can think of is, 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 oh, okay. you know, is one of my neighbors who has three young boys that is all excited about this as well, and I have to live with her too. Um, <laughs> so I had nothing to do with the criteria or picking the group, as did none of my colleagues. It was done by the Citizens Committee as an oversight. All right, so Tracy and, and Nadine, you okay? I'm fine, thank you. We've got a great day, Seth. Yes, okay, fine. Uh, Mr. Smith, we have a motion to move this back to council. Move for approval of the original grant approvals, and then we have to have a second motion, which is Mr. Cardin is his recommendations. Recommendations. Need separate. Approved. So on the first motion, uh, I've second that. That's approved. Back to council next Tuesday. Disapprove the motion. Okay. Disapprove the 245. Approve the original grant. Exactly. Then instruct the department to report back on the issues Mr. Cardin has raised and were discussed earlier today. How many days you want for that? 30, 60? 
30 days is fine. Report back in 30 days to commit. So be it. All right. Okay. That's very clear. Everything clear? Thank Ready you all for coming. Bless you. Have a great day. End of meeting, unless there's any more public comment.